Hey guys, today I'm going to be taking you through the AI spawners and how they work with uh, Smart AI. So we're going to start by going to the Blueprints folder, then AI, and in here is where we have our spawners. So there's three different types of spawners in Smart AI. The first one we're going to use is the uh, AI spawning volume. So dragging this into the world, you can see we've got three shapes here. The first one is the uh, uh, this square. This is where the AI will be spawned and we can actually uh, resize this, uh, make it bigger, smaller, however we want. And basically what this spawner does is it randomly spawns AI within this uh, cube here. Um, then we've got our uh, first uh, sphere here, which is the player activation sphere. So when the player enters this sphere, it will um, the spawner will start spawning AI. And then the bigger uh, one here, we've got um, will deactivate the spawner so it will stop spawning AI. Um, by default, it won't use these. You have to enable them in the settings, but we'll uh, go over that in a second. So we'll start by um, going through the settings here. We want to make sure that first enable spawn AI is set to true. Um, if this isn't, it won't spawn any AI. Then we've got uh, spawning AI, and this is basically uh, how we tell it what AI we want to spawn. Um, so the uh, once we click the add element button, we have a new drop down and we can set the AI that we want to spawn. So for this video, I'm just going to set it to a, uh, the AI deer and we can set how many we want to spawn. So I'm going to tell it free. Um, <clears throat> and if we want it to actually spawn other types of AI, we can always click add element and click the next drop down and we can add uh, some other AI. So I'll add uh, some AI citizens and I'll set that to two. Um, next we've got our overlap size and basically what this does is when it tries to spawn AI it will do a quick check to make sure that there's space um, for the AI in the location um, and this is the size of that check. If you're using bigger AI you'll want to increase this size a little bit just to make sure that it's not overlapping any. Um, Next we've got random rotations. This basically means it will spawn AI facing random directions. Um, next we've got floors. And basically um, the floor we have in this level is a landscape. So the spawner will just work correctly with that. But if you're using a static mesh as your floor, you'll need to uh, click the add element button. And you can either add the static mesh in here or you can click the uh, dropper and select your floor. Um, you will need to do this if you're using a static mesh floor, otherwise it won't spawn the AI. Uh, next we have spawn retries. This is basically uh, goes back to our collision check. If it checks a location and there's no space for the AI, um, this is how many times it will recheck before it stops spawning AI. Um, so you can control that however you like. Um, next we've got waypoints. Basically if the spawner spawns an AI that's set to use the waypoint behavior, that AI will use the waypoints that are set here. So um, you'll need to set those up. So it'll work with this uh, spawner and that will affect all the AI that are spawned with this spawner. Um, next, we've got our spawn time. Um, so this is the amount of time between AI being spawned. By default, this is five seconds. I'm just gonna reduce this to like 0 0.5. Um, so when you hit play, if it's still five seconds, it will be five seconds before an AI spawns. So keep that in mind. Um, spawn time deviation just adds or minuses time to the spawn time to give it some randomization. Um, next we have respawn. So um, we've got whether or not the AI will respawn, um, the respawn time, and uh, again, adds or minuses this amount of time to our respawn time for randomization. Um, and basically what this does is if an AI that's spawned by this spawner dies, the spawner will respawn it after this amount of time. Next, we have our use player uh, proximity activation. Um, if this is true, our AI spawner will not sp uh, start spawning AI until our player enters this first sphere here. Um, and we can set our sphere size as well here. Um, this is in Unreal units, so right now it's set to 2.5 me meters, um, but we can increase that, say we want it to be 400, you'll see our sphere gets bigger. Um, and then we've got our debug settings where we can disable and show our spheres as well, so this can be helpful just to clean your level up a little bit so you can see. 
Um, then we have our um, deactivation sphere settings. So again, if this is ticked, it basically means when the player leaves this outside sphere, um, the spawner will stop spawning AI. Um, and again, to use that, you have to enable um, this setting here. And again, you can set the sphere size um, using this setting. Um, one thing to keep in mind is your activation size should always be smaller than the deactivation size. Um, that's something important to keep in mind. Um, and lastly, we've got our behavior overrides. So if we enable this uh, here, we can basically change the behavior of all the AI that spawned by this spawner and set it to a specific thing uh, that we want them to start off doing. Um, so this can be useful as well. So um, a couple of notes with the uh, spawn volume. Um, if you're using procedural uh, foliage volumes in your level, um, they can interfere with this spawner. So um, I actually have a one over here. Um, if you do have any in your level, you need to select them, um, go to the details and find the collision settings. And you need to make sure that collision enabled is set to no collision like that. Otherwise the spawner won't work if it's inside one of these boxes. So now that we've um, set up our spawner, we should be able to hit play and our AI will start spawning here. Next, we will uh, go on to our um, spawn point. So I'm just gonna drop that into level. This is pretty much exactly the same as the spawn volume, but it will only spawn the AI at this location. Um, uh, and as you can see, our settings are pretty much all identical. Um, they all do the same thing. Um, so you use it in exactly the same way, but our AI will just always spawn in this location. Um, we can set our rotation, you can see here. Um, but yeah, all the settings are exactly the same in here. So you can just use that as you would the spawn volume, but this is good for, say you have like enclosed spaces um, and you want an AI to spawn at a specific spot. Um, this can be useful. And then lastly, we have our AI manager. Um, so I have one in the level here, so I'm just going to select it. Um, I have a separate video on the AI manager that you can check out that goes into more detail. But um, again, we have all the same settings here, um, apart from the um, player activation and deactivation. Um, and basically what the AI manager does, it will spawn AI anywhere um, within your nav mesh bounds volume. There's a few um, requirements for this. You have to have an ash a nav mesh bounds volume in your level. Um, if you're using nav mesh invokers, uh, the AI manager will not spawn AI. Um, so if you're doing that, you'll have to use the AI spawning volume instead of the AI manager. Um, and one other thing is the AI manager will only spawn AI in the first nav mesh bounds volume. So if you have multiple uh, nav mesh volumes in your level, the AI manager will only spawn AI in the first one. Um, but other than that, uh, we can set it up exactly the same way from our um, as our spawn volume. If I I've already got it set up to uh, spawn some AI here, um, but if I hit simulate, you can see it should start spawning our AI in uh, just like that. So hopefully you guys found this video useful. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and uh, join our Discord, which I'll link in the description. Thank you for watching.